All right, my friends, we are going to take a look at what's called compositions of functions. Uh, we first need to start off by remembering what a function is. So if we think about the function that adds 3, we might write it as f of x equals x plus 3. What this does is it takes any input x and it just adds 3 to it. So if we put in an input of 2, then we just add 3 to it and the output is 5. Well, we might want to try something like f of f of 2. That means that we add 3 and then add 3 again. So we apply the function and then we apply it again. Well, the first time we apply the function uh, to 2, to an input of 2, we'll get 5. So after applying the function once, we'll have f of 5. If we apply f to 5, we'll add 3 and end up with 8. So we add 3 and then add 3 and we end up with 8. If we think about f of f of x, again, this means this is the function that adds 3 and then adds 3 again. So if we apply the function one time to x, we'll get x plus 3. If we apply the function again, we will end up with x plus 6. So notice, of course, the result of adding 3 and then adding 3 is just to add 6 to the thing that you started with. All right, we can think of another function that is the function that quadruples that we'll call g of x. So g of x is just 4 times x. You just quadruple whatever you give the thing. So g of 2, well, we just quadruple the 2 and end up with 8. Well, we might want to try something like f of g of 10. Well, what this function will do is it will first quadruple the 10, and then it will add 3 to the result of that. Um, so you kind of work from the inside out, right? So what we're going to do is apply the function g to 10, or the quadrupling function to 10. Well, if you quadruple 10, you get 40. So now we're just left with f of 40. Well, f is the function that adds 3, so we just need to add 3 to 40, and you end up with 43. As another example, we might think of g of f of 10. So notice the order here matters. We've just switched the order. So instead of quadrupling, then adding 3, what we're going to do here is we're going to add 3, and then we're going to quadruple. Well, so what you do is you, again, you work from sort of the inside out. So we're going to apply the function that adds 3 to 10 first. And of course, that's going to give us 13. Uh, and then we're left with the function g that quadruples. So we need to quadruple the 13, which gives us 52. So 4 times 13 is 52. Just to try another couple examples to get this wrapped up, we might think of, well, say f of g of just some arbitrary x. So again, what's happening here is we quadruple first, because g is the function that quadruples, and then we add 3. Well, if we quadruple x, we're going to get 4x. So now we're just left with the function that adds 3. If we add 3 to 4x, we get 4x plus 3. We might think about switching the order and doing uh, g of f of x. This switches the order, so this is going to add 3, and then it's going to quadruple the result. Well, so if we add 3 to x, you'll get x plus 3. And then g is the function that quadruples, so we need to quadruple the entirety of x plus 3. Um, so that would be 4 times the quantity of x plus 3. And you might wrap this up by, say, distributing the 4. Um, so finally, you end up with 4x plus 12 as the result. As a final example, you could put do three of these operations uh, in a row. So this will be f of g of f of x. So there's three things happening here. And again, you kind of work from the inside out. So you'll apply f first, then g, then f again. So what that means is we're going to add 3, because that's what f does. We're going to then quadruple, that's what g does. Then we're going to add 3 again, finally, because that's what uh, the operator, uh, the function f does. Well, so let's go in order. If we add 3 to x, you get x plus 3. So we've sort of used up this, we've applied the first function f. Um, so now we need to apply the quadrupling function to x plus 3. Uh, we've already figured out that that is 4x plus 12. So if you quadruple 4x plus 3, you'll get 4x plus 12. And then finally, we just have to add 3 to the result of this. 
So that would be 4x plus 12 and then add 3. And then, of course, we can combine the 12 and the 3 to get 4x plus 15. So that's how compositions of functions works. I hope you find this helpful. And thanks for watching.